Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about monopolies. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into the content. Now in the last unit we learned about perfectly competitive firms. Here we're going to learn about imperfectly competitive firms and the first of those is the least competitive monopolies. Monopolies have some specific qualities and the first one is that monopolies have just one seller within the market. That means the market is the firm and the firm is the market. We also have high barriers to entry. Those barriers to entry are so high it prevents new businesses from entering the market. Because if new firms enter to compete, we no longer have a monopoly. The product that monopolies sell is unique. That means there are no close substitutes. And as a result, monopolies have a lot of influence on the price they can charge. They are what's called price seekers. And they don't have to just take the price from the market like a perfectly competitive firm has to. Next, we're going to talk about the demand curve for a monopoly and its relationship to the marginal revenue curve. Since the market is the firm and the firm is the market, the monopoly firm is going to see the entire market demand curve. That market demand curve is also going to be the average revenue and the price for the firm. And since that firm demand curve is downward sloping, that means as a monopoly increases output, it must lower the price on the units it sells. So if they produce low quantities of output, they can charge a higher price. But at higher quantities of output, the price must fall. If we convert that demand curve to a table with numbers, we can see that the price for the first unit and the marginal revenue will be equal. But as the firm produces more units of output, the price is going to have to fall. That means the total revenue increases by a smaller amount than the price, $8 in this case. And as more units continue to be produced, the price is going to fall further but the marginal revenue is going to fall faster than the price. When we graph out the demand curve, the quantity column and the price column make that demand curve. But the marginal revenue curve is the same quantity with the marginal revenue column. And if we head back over to the graph, since our marginal revenue was always less than our demand, that means that the marginal revenue curve will go below the demand curve on the graph. And as you may have already learned back in unit two, that marginal revenue curve tells us about the elasticity of the demand curve above. Where marginal revenue is positive, the demand curve above is elastic. Where marginal revenue intersects the x-axis, that's where total revenue is no longer increasing, and that's the unit elastic point on the demand curve above. Then as marginal revenue becomes negative, we enter the inelastic range of the demand curve above. And again, the reason the marginal revenue is below the demand curve is because the monopolist must lower the price on all units of output as it produces more. Now in our next video, we will learn about price discriminating monopolies and price discriminating monopolies don't have to lower the price, in which case we will have a different relationship between the demand curve and the marginal revenue curve. Now we're going to take a look at the graph for a monopoly and learn how to draw this graph. First of all, we need our x-axis and our y-axis. The y-axis is labeled P for price and the x-axis is labeled Q for quantity. We have the downward sloping demand curve with marginal revenue below as we just saw. And next we're going to add in the marginal cost curve. It looks the same as the marginal cost curve you learned about for perfectly competitive firms. And just like perfectly competitive firms, they are going to produce where MR equals MC. Find that intersection between those two curves, drop down to the x-axis, that is the firm's profit maximizing quantity. At lower units of output, the marginal revenue will be greater than the marginal cost, so the firm should produce more units of output. At higher quantities, the marginal revenue will be less than the marginal cost, so the firm will actually make more profit by producing less. It's at MR equals MC where all firms profit maximize. Now to find the profit maximizing price, we aren't going to head over to the price axis here. We're actually going to move up to the price curve. The P in DARP stands for price. So move all the way up to the demand curve above the MR equals MC point and then head over to the Y axis. That is the price the monopoly charges for this quantity of output. Now most of the time when you draw this graph for a monopoly, the monopoly will be earning economic profits. And when that's the case, the average total cost curve will go below that price quantity point on the demand curve. So let's draw in our average total cost curve below the average revenue curve, which is the demand curve. And since the average total cost is less than demand, that means this firm is earning economic profits. And you can find the profit box in that rectangle right there. It's the gap between the average revenue or demand to the average total cost curve 
all the way over to the y-axis. And if there were numbers here, you could calculate the area of that rectangle to find the amount of economic profit this firm earns. And since the barriers to entry for a monopoly are so high, this firm is going to earn economic profits in the long run because firms cannot enter the market and compete this profit away. If instead we were to put the average total cost curve at the price quantity point on that demand curve, then since the average total cost curve equals the price, then this firm is earning zero economic profit, which is the same thing as a normal profit or breaking even. If we move the average total cost curve up higher, now the firm is going to be earning economic losses because the average total cost curve is greater than the price. And if we find the gap between the average revenue curve and the average total cost curve, then move all the way over to the price axis, that rectangle right there is the amount of economic loss this monopoly faces when the average total costs are greater than their price. And again, if we had numbers here, you could calculate the area of that rectangle to find the amount. Next, we're going to talk about efficiency when it comes to monopolies. Now, one thing monopolies often have going for them is that they capture economies of scale. That's because at the profit maximizing quantity, the average total cost curve is downward sloping. And since monopolies are always in the long run, thanks to high barriers to entry, that average total cost curve is the long run average total cost curve. But since that average total cost curve is still downward sloping at the profit maximizing quantity, this firm is not going to be productively efficient. Productive efficiency is found at the minimum of the average total cost curve. So it's the quantity where the average total cost curve intersects the marginal cost curve. Also, since this firm's price is greater than the marginal cost, this firm is not going to be allocatively efficient. And as a result, they will have this triangle of deadweight loss. And we could once again calculate the amount of deadweight loss by calculating the area of that triangle if there were numbers. Next, we're going to compare a monopoly to a perfectly competitive market. Here we have a perfectly competitive market with a downward sloping demand curve, upward sloping supply curve, and the competitive market quantity and price mark. If we want to turn this market into a monopoly, we just have to remember that the supply curve is the marginal cost curve above the minimum of the average variable cost. And with a monopoly, that demand curve is also the average revenue and price with a marginal revenue curve below the demand. Monopolies produce where MR equals MC, and that is a lower quantity than we have with the perfectly competitive market. And the price the monopoly charges is all the way up at the demand curve above, and so a monopoly charges a higher price than a perfectly competitive market. So in the end, monopolies charge higher prices and produce lower quantities. Next, we're going to talk about some other important aspects that you need to know about monopolies. First of all, we have some other areas on this graph you may need to know. The total revenue for this firm is the price times the quantity. It's that area right there. It's the quantity they're producing up to the average revenue curve over to the price axis to make that rectangle of total revenue. Next, we have the total cost of production. It's from the quantity they're producing up to the average total cost curve over to the price axis. And we have the consumer surplus, which is the price that is being charged over to the demand curve up to the demand curve above to create a triangle. And if we have a straight marginal cost curve that connects down to the axis, we can find the producer surplus as well. It's that area right there. It's from the price that's being charged over to the quantity produced down to the marginal cost curve below. Other important quantities you need to know about is the socially optimal or allocatively efficient quantity. It's found where the price equals the marginal cost. Right there, it's the intersection between the marginal cost curve and the demand curve. And that's where we will have zero deadweight loss. Where the average total cost curve equals the marginal cost, that's the productively efficient quantity. And where marginal revenue equals zero, that is the revenue maximizing quantity. Finally, we need to talk about a natural monopoly. Now, there are a few different ways you can draw a natural monopoly, but this one's my favorite. It has a horizontal marginal cost curve and a downward sloping average total cost curve that never quite touches the marginal cost. The important thing to know about a natural monopoly is that the average total cost curve constantly downward slopes through all relevant quantities. And that means a natural monopoly will always capture economies of scale. And in unit six, you will learn about regulating natural monopolies to reduce deadweight loss. And there you have it. That is what you need to know about the least competitive of markets, monopolies. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to reviewweekon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.